Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. I'll tell you what happened to me this week. I had a really lovely catch up online with a swimming group called the World Wetnachi Swimmers in uh, Washington State. And that was brilliant to hear all about their swimming in the area they swim in and really to meet some other swimmers. So big shout out to those guys. Hi, hopefully I'll get to come swim with you at some point. Maybe you can hear those uh, fog signals going off, um, but I thought I'd take the opportunity, as it is foggy, to come down and have a little swim and also to chat about the risks associated with swimming in the fog. It's not massively foggy here, but you can normally see the Isle of Wight, which is across there. So it's not uh, thick fog, which is less than 180 metres and it's not dense fog which is less than 50 metres but it is fog because I've got less than a thousand metres visibility over there Before coming down for the swim I did think I'd leave it a few hours because early on this morning it was what we call a real pea super there was so much fog, I could barely see my car out of the um, bedroom window. So I thought I'd leave it a little while, uh, definitely to minimise some of the risk, uh, but also to see if it warmed up a little bit. So you can see the fog has indeed come back in, although it isn't forecast to disappear. Um, happily for me to be able to film this, it has just come back. Remember as I walked up the beach you could see all of the channel marking posts. Now I can just see one over there and this floating one. Those mark the edge of a deep water channel so I won't be crossing over that line. So to start with my little traditional bob around to see what the water's doing. I'm thinking that it should be coming inbound so that I will end up swimming that way first. I'm on, a, um, on an estuary here, the mouth of the Bewley River, if you're interested to look, and I'm swimming from a place called Leap. So um, one good thing is that any traffic in the area should be sounding fog signals. Now it's not great to know there is traffic in the area, but the interesting thing is that they sound that signal every two minutes as a minimum. So if you've got your watch, that can help you. You could be wondering what the attraction is about swimming in the fog, but for me, I like the eerie quality of it. The sound quality, oh, and I've just spotted one kayak, maybe two. You may be able to see them just coming out of the mist over there. So it's nice to have that funny sound quality. I feel like you hear more. Maybe that's because your um, perception of visibility is altered so you can't see as much. So maybe your ears kicking more. Other things I like about it is it just feels really peaceful and you can feel like you're in a completely different place which maybe brings me on to the first risk 
and that's the risk of disorientation. So you'll see here, I'm definitely in sight of the beach. I'm trying to make sure that I stay, let me see here, yep, I'm stood up there, so I'm within my depth, I'm inside of the beach, and swimming in this direction, I know that the shallow water is that way. Might sound a little bit over the top that, but if you get disorientated, you've seen how quickly that fog came in from when I was getting changed. I mean, there was a bit of faffing, but not that much. And it's come in, and it's meant that I can barely see any of the channel marks. So having an idea of the orientation of your swim is really important. Let me just show you looking that way, further up the beach, where you can see the groins, the ends of the groins, the ones I usually get in by, but only just. So that's maybe about 100 metres away. So it really is pretty foggy today. So to make sure you don't get disorientated, keep an eye on the shoreline, swim parallel to it and stay in your depth. Because if you do get disorientated, you can just stand up and just get your bearings. Another thing about fog is that smaller boats will stay to the very sides of channels or even outside of them to avoid bigger vessels. But what they certainly won't be expecting is to come across a swimmer. So that's one of the reasons I've got no earplugs in. I don't have my neoprene hat on or even a silicon one. I've just got this uh, bobble fell off it hat and um, I'm keeping a listening watch. So when I said that your hearing improves in the fog or that sound is more apparent, I'm listening out for voices um, on paddle boards, potentially voices on sailing vessels, but right here, I'm too shallow for them. And I'm also listening out for fog signals on boats. So that's one of the things I really like about swimming in the fog, is that you can go boat spotting, and you know from previous videos, I do like a big boat. And you can listen out for them and try to figure out where they are and kind of what they're up to. And it is really only a vague sense, but a couple of little sound signals for you to think about. Bearing in mind they happen at least every two minutes. One long tone of about five or six seconds is a power vessel underway. So those ones we've been hearing there, those are probably container ships or something in the shipping channel heading into or out of Southampton. Another one that's interesting to listen for is where there's one long and then two short blasts of a couple of seconds each. And that is a vessel that's doing something. So it could be towing, it could be fishing, it could be sailing. So that would be almost silent, a sailing one. So it's just good to have a little listen out. There are loads more and I'll put a link below as to where you can find them if you're interested. It's just something I really enjoy having a listen out and a lookout for the other stuff that's in the water with me. Okay, here's a temptation that's occurring. I'm not far off the beach, as you can see, and there's a post just there that is tempting to swim to, but I'm not seeing it reliably. So I'm actually not going to swim out to it. I'm gonna turn around and swim back in the direction I came from. Because if I get to that one, having swum outwards on the estuary, and then I lose sight of land, that could be a bit disorientating. So 
I'm gonna head back in this direction. It is quite odd having the sun come through the fog and it feeling kind of nice and warm on my face because the water most certainly doesn't feel that warm on my body. I think swimming in the fog can be a pretty special experience. It's quite similar to swimming in the dark, um, but it does carry that little extra risk that you can't necessarily be seen and you also can't see that well. Of course it is different if you're swimming in a river that doesn't have a river or a lake that doesn't have any um, vessel movements so you're in a fairly peaceful location. Swimming in the fog there brings a slightly different challenge in that you need to uh, you need to really think about you get out and how you're going to spot it. So knowing how long it takes to swim to where you're going to and also keeping sight of your get out if you're swimming from and back to that place. Look at these ripples, they're amazing. One extra thing you can do to make sure that you keep yourself safe is to carry some means of making a noise with you. For example, one of those um, kind of duck horns. It's like a it's like a mini vuvuzela where you go Voo! because then you can make yourself seen or heard potentially by anything that's coming your way. I've only had it once where I've been getting in and I've spotted three personal watercraft coming out through the fog towards me um, and they were going really slowly and quietly these jet skis I just had a little chat with them they were looking for a cafe they'd been out in the fog they got themselves a bit cold but that would have been a real big surprise had I not heard them uh, and had it not been moving super slowly they were really surprised to spot me in the water I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and that if you have you'll give it a like drop me a comment if you've got any other tips for swimming when they've got reduced visibility um, and if you've got any ideas of things you'd like me to cover in the future please let me know I would love it if you'd join me and subscribe to my channel too by clicking on the little picture of my face and dinging the little bell so you get the notification for when the next one's out and I'll see you next time bye